Hey guys, Tammy here. In this video, I'm going to talk about claiming children on taxes. Now, this was a request by somebody on um, one of the previous videos I did. So if you have a request about something that you would like for me to talk about that you feel like you're struggling with that maybe I haven't, you know, zeroed in on specifically, let me know, leave a comment. We do our best to follow up on those and um, and I'll I'll try to do a video on it if I if I can, you know, <laughs> if I'm able to. So we're going to dive into this issue of taxes. Um, there's a lot of different moving parts to it. Hopefully I can make it a little bit clearer for you. Before we do that, let me just remind you, if you like the content, don't forget to hit like on the video and also subscribe to the channel so that you get notified as new videos are released. If you're not checking out the podcast, go over and check out the podcast, a little bit different content. And as always, please feel free to share on social media. When you are going through divorce, breakup, whatever, if you are in a situation where you have court orders, those court orders should say who claims the children on taxes, okay? If you have a support order in place, Typically, almost always, dare I say, that child support order will contain in it who is claiming the child on taxes. Now, a lot of times what happens is there is a written portion of the order, right? And then many times there'll be a calculation attached. If there isn't anything written in the order specifically about who's claiming the children, but there is a calculation attached, that calculation will put the withholdings for the children in one column or the other, mom's column or dad's column, right? So the, specifically the calculator we use in California, it'll say father, mother, and it'll say how many exemptions and whether they're single and had a household and all that. So a lot of times it's not like, written into the order in narrative form, but by way of the calculation, it is contained in the order, okay? And the reason is because th that affects the child support. If you are a child support receiver and you claim the child on taxes, you get less support. If you are the child support payer and the court orders that you claim the child on taxes, then you pay more, okay, because the person getting the tax exemption ends up with more income. So depending on if you're the payer or the receiver, it's going to shift that number um, accordingly, according to whether you're the, the payer or the receiver. That's typically how you know who's claiming the kids on taxes. Now, most of the time, the issue becomes either I don't have an order in there or I don't uh, think the order really specifies a specific, you know, person, doesn't designate a specific person, and there is no calculation or whatever. There's only the narrative, and it doesn't specify. Or somebody will just claim them even though they're not supposed to, right? <laughs> That's probably one of the more typical scenarios. So first, let's talk about if you don't have an order, okay? Now, if you don't have an order, what happens is you fall under IRS rules, okay? You fall under IRS rules on these issues absent a specific court order. Now, let me just say, I am not a CPA. I am not a tax person. <laughs> you need to check with your tax person on specifics, but I'm going to give you some general guidelines based on how I've seen this play out. It, it, even in my own situation with Thomas, we've had this issue, okay? If there are no orders in place, what the IRS rule says is whichever parent per, had the children, usually whichever parent has the children more than half the time, that person under IRS rules is entitled to claim the child, okay? So if if you've been giving child support to the other person and the other person has the child the vast majority of the time, 
and you guys don't have a court order in place. You've just been given over whatever in support that the two of you agreed on and there's no order in place and you're seeing the child less than half the time, the other parent is automatically entitled to claim the child unless the two of you agree that you're going to claim the child, okay? Which which one of the parents can do. You can do what's called a release of the exemption. And there's an IRS form that you use to do that, to say, hey, I, I'm entitled to claim the child, but I'm going to let the other parent claim the child, okay? So if you don't have an order, then it automatically goes to whoever has more than 50% of the parenting time because that person is... um you know, the person that's providing for the child the larger portion of the time, all right? Secondly is when um, somebody goes against the order and files even though they shouldn't, right? <laughs> so when that happens, and a lot of people have this happen, they're like, I'm supposed to get the exemption, but the other person filed. We actually had this happen in Thomas's case. And so if you don't have an order and you kind of have 50-50 and you have no orders in place about who claims the exemption, then as a general rule, it'll just be whoever files first, whoever got to it first. Because if whoever got to it first isn't actually supposed to claim the children and you try, you're going to get a letter from the IRS. So this is what happened with Thomas is we he had an order that he claimed the children every year, right? He, he and his ex-wife had 50-50, but he was the higher earner. She actually was home with new children from her second marriage. So she had no income to, from which to claim the children, right? So it didn't matter. So anyway, he was the higher earner. The court gave him the exemptions. As a general rule, the, if the parents have 50-50, the court will usually give the higher person the ability to claim the children on taxes because that's frankly usually what's most beneficial to both people from a financial perspective. Okay, now if you don't have 50-50, like in my case, um, I had like 80% of the custody. And so my ex-husband was the higher earner, but even though he was the higher earner, the court put the exemptions with me because I had the vast majority of the parenting time. So I think the court tries to stay in line with IRS rules where they can, where it makes sense, you know, to do that. Um, I think the only time it varies is when it financially can be advantageous to the parties. So uh, Thomas's, uh, was in, was entitled, Thomas was entitled to claim his two children on taxes. So one year we filed taxes and we got a note back from the IRS that said, hey, somebody already claimed these children on their taxes. So his ex-wife had filed before us and she had claimed the children on taxes. Did she know that she wasn't supposed to do that? I think she probably did, but I don't know. So what the IRS letter said essentially is, if you have a court order, please provide it. And so we had to turn around and send our court order in that showed that Thomas was entitled to claim the children. And then once the IRS received that, they processed our return and they actually went back and revised his ex-wife's return and decreased her refund that she had gotten and pulled some of their money back. This can be really financially difficult sometimes if you've done it one way and then, you know, you're you're looking at them taking money back. I know that can be a financial crunch. You know, it, it also causes additional red tape and all that and time and effort and energy. Like we had to send the order in. It delayed the processing of our return. And I have seen situations where it can also trigger an audit of both parties tax returns because it's like okay something isn't right and so it's real important that you're on the same page about who's claiming the children and what you're doing each year and especially if you have some people have orders where the tax exem exemption flips each year um i think that's a little bit harder to deal with personally just because you know it flops back and forth um but again even when the court does that, they generally bake it into the child support order. So they'll do a calculation where, okay, parent A claims the children, here's how much the child support would be. 
parent B claims the child, here's how much the child support would be. So we're going to add that together, divide by two, and that's going to be the child support number. And now we're just going to flip flop the exemption every year. You really want to talk to a tax person if your situation particularly is complex at all. And sometimes even when it's not, it's just helpful to educate yourself and know, okay, am I fighting over something that doesn't even really matter? Like I see people really fight over being able to claim these tax exemptions. And I will tell you, like, for instance, in our situation, Thomas's ex-wife, her being able to claim the children didn't really help her any because she kind of got the same amount of money. I actually did the calculations one year and she got kind of the same amount of money, whether it was it was just a matter of whether it coming through child support or was it coming through a tax break. But it was the same amount of money either way. So at the end of the year, it didn't really make a difference to her. Whereas with me and Thomas, those exemptions made a much bigger difference because we were in a higher tax bracket because we have higher earnings. So those exemptions were worth more to us than the difference that it made in our support. If that makes sense on a dollar for dollar basis. You know, I don't remember the exact numbers, but let's say it lowered our child support by a thousand dollars a year, but it upped our taxes by two thousand dollars a year. You know, that type of thing to where it didn't make any sense it, because giving her the exemptions wouldn't change her overall numbers, but it did change ours. So that's why you want to look at this and really think through it logically and not emotionally of as the other, you know, oh, the other person's just getting something. Well, no, it's baked into the child support. Now, if you're setting the child support at zero and you otherwise would have it in your case, okay, maybe it makes sense to flip flop bit back and forth or whatever if you're agreeing to something outside the box. But for the most part, these exemptions are taken into consideration when the court calculates the number. It's just a lot of times people don't realize that that went into the calculation or that went into the order and they end up fighting about it after the fact. So moral of the story, go pull your order out and look at it you don't have orders yet, go talk to a tax person so you can understand if this is worth fighting over or not. And third, if you have an order, follow it. Don't claim the children when you know full well that you're not supposed to if the other parent is supposed to, okay? <laughs> so I hope that little chat has been helpful. If you'd like to learn more about my services and how I might be able to support you in understanding this and other issues around child custody and support, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There's a link on that page where you can book a time to speak to a member of my staff, learn more about my services and how I might be able to help you on this journey. See you guys next time.